Hey, Michael with X-Force PC. Today I'm going to talk about how to set up the Real Sim Gear 530 or 430. We're actually working with the 530 here with a quad screen system. And the reason this is significant is all the graphics cards today only support four monitors. But we need five because the, these Garmin or GNS 530s from Real Sim Gear, also the, the 530, the 430, and the 1000, they're all considered monitors to the computer and they need a monitor connection. So that means there's five monitors now. And as I mentioned earlier, our video cards only support four. So we're going to use the onboard graphics here. And one thing I need to mention is before you go into this, uh, you need to make sure that your chip, your graph, your video, God, I can't talk, your processor supports onboard graphics. So almost all of the Intel processors do. Um, a lot of the Ryzen ones, about half of them do, half of them don't, like the Ryzen 2700, 2600, 2700X, none of those support it. But if, the, if it's an APU, it supports onboard graphics. If it ends with the letter G for graphics, like the 2200G, 2400G, it supports onboard graphics. Um, and then, you know, most of the Intels do. You just Google your chip and find out if it has integrated graphics. Now, integrated graphics are slow. We do not use integrated graphics for X-Plane. It will crawl, it will be so slow. But, to, for, but for just displaying the contents of the GPS, it's perfectly fine. We don't need fast graphics for that. So it's very important that you don't use your onboard graphics for X-Plane, but it is okay to use it for your GNS 530, 430, or even the G1000. I'll eventually have a video on that, I'm sure. Hey, this is Mike Old X Force PC. We've been getting questions from time to time about using the Real Sim gear, either 430 or 530, with our quad screen system. And could that work? And is that possible? And the reason that it's difficult to do is graphics cards today only support four displays. So if you're using one, two, three, four, how do you hook up the real SIM gear 530 or 430? Because it's a display also. Yes, it is a considered a display. And so we're going to talk about how to make that happen now. One of the things you have to do to make this work is you're going to have to leverage your onboard graphics for the Garmin 530 to work. And what do I mean by onboard graphics? Well, of course, if you're running X-Plane, you have a graphics card in your computer and the graphics card's driving these monitors and that graphics card is being used because you need fast graphics. Well, for the Garmin display, you don't need fast graphics. So you can use the onboard graphics on your motherboard. Now, typically those graphics are disabled by default and you have to go into the BIOS and you have to tell the onboard graphics to be enabled. When they're set to auto, uh, what happens is if the BIOS or the motherboard sees a graphics card in the computer, then it automatically disables the onboard graphics. So I went into the BIOS on this computer and told the onboard graphics to, to be on or enabled even if you see a graphics card. And so I have the real Sim Gear 430, excuse me, 530 plugged into the onboard graphics. And because I've enabled the onboard graphics, what we see here when we first start it up is you see all these monitors and they are somewhat arranged. And the first step in this process is to arrange the monitors correctly. Now you can hit this identify button and these numbers will pop up on each screen. You just hit identify over and over again as many times as you need to hit it just so that you can see which monitor is which. I'm just hitting identify over and over again. And everything's arranged correctly except monitor number five which is my 530. When I hit identify, a little number 5 appears on my 530. So we want to arrange this in physical space so that our mouse will move to it properly. 
So when I move my mouse off the right side of the screen, here it goes over to monitor two, and I move it off the left, left screen, left side of the screen, it goes to monitor three. And when I go down like this with the mouse, it goes down to monitor four, and that's because I have them arranged correctly. So I need to take this monitor, and I'm gonna tuck it up in this corner right here. That monitor number five, again, is the one plugged into the onboard graphics, and it's the one associated with the 530. And I hit apply. Now, if I come over to monitor number two, and I go down like this, my mouse shows up down on the 530, and I know it's so small, but you, you know, you can't see it, but it is showing up down there. Um, I'm probably not going to do any B-roll on this to show you that. Just take my word for it that the mouse went down there. Now the other thing, let's start going through, you know, the setup process of this thing. So the next thing you have to do in screen arrangement, you'll notice on here, if you could see it, I know it's small, but the screen is upside down. The task bar is up at the top of the screen and all the letters and numbers are upside down. So I need to click on number five. In my case, it's number five. It may not be number five for you, uh, but number five corresponds to the 530. Click on it and go down here and choose a landscape flip. And when I do that and hit keep changes, it just flipped this screen over here and now it looks like a normal screen. Um, it is not upside down anymore like it was just a moment ago. So the next thing you'd want to do is just take your mouse and drag it over here, drag it over here, drag it down here, drag it over to here. Make sure your mouse is following like it should. And then you know you've got all your screens set up correctly. Um, all of my big displays are 1920 by 1080. And then it just so happens that screen number five is actually a 1280 by 720 screen. Now to con continue the setup of your Garmin uh, or your Real Sim Gear G530, uh, you'll want to go to the Real Sim Gear website. I'm just get realsimgear.com here and uh, click on the setup link and then go to setup guides and you'll see one here for the GNS 530 setup guide or the 430 if you're setting up a 430 and then um, it tells you in here how to do some of the stuff that I already talked about flipping the screen and so forth but another thing it'll have you do is download a file and this file is a new bezel for the Garmin 530 that's built into X-Plane. And let me show you why we're doing that. This is the artwork associated with the 530 in X-Plane. As you can see, it's got all the buttons around the edges and all that. Well, we have physical buttons on here, right? So I don't want to drag this down here to this screen and have the physical button showing on the, I mean, have, having the virtual button showing on the screen. So we're going to replace it with this. It's essentially a blank uh, picture so that none of those bezels show up. And so that's a part of the directions here. You browse to, and I know you can't see it, but it's in the directions the X-Plane folder, then go to Resources, Bitmaps, Cockpit, Radios, GPS, FMS, and you're going to replace, and I'm actually going to make a copy of it, I'm, so I don't, um, let's see, lose it, a copy of it here, and I'll, I've already downloaded the file, and I'm going to uh, copy it over here and replace that file in X-Plane. And hopefully it'll make better sense what I just did when we open up X-Plane and take a look at it. Hey, it's me again. I just thought of something that I forgot to tell you. So, um, you know that uh, file we just downloaded, the one that corrects the bezel, um, that gets rid of the bezel? The next time you do an update to X-Plane, it's going to see that that file has changed. And it's going to say, hey, do you want to replace this file? We see that it's not current, it's different. 
and you're gonna need to hit the skip button on that. Now, don't fret if you forget and you don't hit skip and you don't tell the X-Plane updater to not overwrite your special file that you downloaded, you can always go download it again. But I did wanna throw that in as something to be concerned about. So the next thing we wanna do is download the plugin for the GNS 530 and um, it's right here. Um, download, install the Real Sim Gear plugin. You click on X-Plane 11, you download the plugin, and it's going to download it into your downloads folder. And what you want to do is you want to extract that file, and that is this one here. Actually, I'm going to do it a different way. I'm going to right click, I'm going to use 7-zip and extract it to a folder. And so it creates a folder called Real Sim Gear Plugin for X Plane. Go inside of there, there's a folder called Real Sim Gear. And when I go inside of there, we see that there's the, the plugins are in there. So we go back up a level and we're just going to take this Real Sim Gear folder and we're going to copy it and we're going to paste it into our X Plane Resources Plugins folder. Right click and choose Paste. Sorry, that was my phone. And I've already got it in there, so that's why I got the message about replacing it. So inside of your um, X-Plane Resources Plugins folder, you should now have a folder called Real, Real Sim Gear. And inside of that folder, Lin underscore X64, Mac underscore X64, and Win underscore X64, as well as command mapping.ini and a readme file. So now the plugin is installed and we can move on to the next step. Okay, so to recap, we arranged, well, we enabled, or I, I did, you, not, not with you on watching me, but I enabled the onboard graphics. I've got my real sim gear plugged into the onboard graphics because I'm using all four of my monitor outputs already. We installed the real sim gear plugin. And we also, um, we, we replaced the artwork for the Garmin 530. Um, I need to undo this, <laughs> put it back up here. Okay, and we also installed the artwork to remove the bezels from the 530. And let me just show you what I'm talking about here. Um, view is forward with 3D panel. So like here's the 430 I'm looking at. Notice how there's all these buttons and stuff around here. All we care about is the screen. And since we've replaced that artwork on the 530, when I open the 530, look, all we get is data on there. We don't have all this artwork around the edges and that's what we want. So to get the 530 down here where we want it, you click on your 530 in your cockpit and then um, in the upper right hand corner, it's real hard to see, it looks like two little X's. There is um, a little sort of hot area, button area you click on and watch how it puts it into a window like that, that I can now drag off the screen down to my Real Sim Gear 530 right down here. I just drag, oh, well, you know what? You missed that because I was zoomed in. Let me try that one more time. So again, I put it into a window and then I'm going to drag it down and see how it appears when I drag it down on the 530. And then I hit the little maximize button to maximize it. And now my screen is down here on the 530. And by the way, there is a stand for this thing. We just have it sitting on the tabletop, but there is a stand for it in case you were wondering. Um, so that's how you get the 530 screen down there. And then I could hit Control W and just have scenery only. And as you can probably tell, I'm running Air Manager down here to control or to show my instruments. And then I can also use, you know, the touch screen to turn the knobs and so forth. And the knobs over here do work. Because we installed the plugin, the plugin is what allows when you turn these knobs, see how the display is changing. The fact that I installed that plugin allows the knobs to work. 
And if you look up in the plugins menu up at the top of X-Plane, you'll see that there is a real SIM gear device interface and I can hit connected hardware and it just basically tells me that I've got a the real SIM gear GNS 530 connected. Now keep in mind all the directions for setting this up are on the real SIM gear website. You're not required to use my directions. These are video directions. There's also, as I say, printed directions on the Real Sim Gear website, which, um, you know, that's what I use to set this up, and you might find that that works better for you. One thing that they, I don't believe, address is the whole onboard graphics thing. And we have found, we've done a full shutdown on this thing, that we can completely shut down everything everything shut down now even shut down the whole computer which I'm not going to do right now uh, and fire it back up and everything gets remembered so I'm going to fire up my air manager first which usually we recommend doing then I'm going to fire up X-Plane and X-Plane will remember the position of that Garmin 530 panel and, uh, and it will stick it right down there keep in mind if you ever unplug your monitors move your monitors around uh, possibly if you do a driver update you could lose um, some of this arrangement but you know it the setup is the same way again if you ever had to redo it you just uh, do it again and um, let's see what we got here I need to maximize that and there we go it's all up and running again so uh, hopefully that helps you get started with the Garmin 530 and uh, using it with a quad screen package.